four. And we back. Okay, so we have been like rushing all day. We're trying to like get in more shows this season than last time. And that requires a, a lot of stressful running between things. Okay, so we're walking up to Norkai Ninomiya. I'm extremely excited about this one. This is another member of the Comme de Garçon universe. And they take a lot of inspiration directly from Rei Kawakubo from the main line. Norkai used to be one of the pattern cutters for Rei. And then much like Junya Watanabe, Rei gave them her blessing to just kind of break off and start their own project under the wider label of Comme de Garçon. Much like Rei Kawakubo's work, Norkai Ninomiya often doesn't have any point of inspiration. The goal is to present something that has truly never been seen before. So it makes it uh, very difficult as a critic to work with that, but it's very exciting because the clothes are always just like so, so much. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really excited. Let's go see. When I'm talking about abstract designers, I'm always afraid to speak in absolutes. So I'm going to be brave here and try to give you all a launch pad from which to view this. Nina Mia's brand is based around the color black. So with that in mind, we're told that the premiere piece this season is look one. Nina Mia told Vogue that this collection stems from this look, though if I'm being honest, I'm not able to walk that out for you other than for small motifs like there's houndstooth in this, there are top hats, these are hunting boots. These are all very English motifs that carry us through the entirety of the show, but only just as that, motifs. When of course, when we look at this collection, we see things like this, and we want to dive deeper into them. We want a basis from which to understand this gorgeous piece. I don't have answers for you yet. Nor Kai remains an enigma to me still. One thing that we can be sure of is that Nina Mia is not simply creating studio art under the guise of fashion. These clothes are meant to be worn, and I was fortunate enough to meet a number of women who proudly buy and wear his designs all the time. I've followed Nina Mia's work for years, and this was my first time attending a show with them, and it was absolutely breathtaking. So beautiful. This is the last show of the day. This is Veillant who we interviewed actually last women's wear season. She does really cool stuff, kind of in the same category as Nancy Dojaka. Let's go see, hopefully we are on time. Hey, good to see you again. You? So first good. runway show. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I liked some of the motifs, like actually I'm really glad you're wearing this one because it almost seems like the ruffles are like flowers, like calla lilies a little bit. Can you tell me about some other like inspiration for this, this one? Uh, so this is kind of uh, references uh, about the reef uh, because the collection is uh, inspired by natural uh, beach, paradise uh, and also the city. So we have also like super strong laser uh, embroidery. Uh, we have like glass fringe embroidery. Where, where do you want to take the brand next? Because you've made a pretty big jump this time going from showrooms last time that I spoke to you to now a runway, like what's the next big step? I want for the future that I can do a second show. Uh, maybe with, uh, uh, after this show, maybe it's gonna um, bring some good news uh, because uh, it's super expensive, so yes. Continue building it. Yes. Very cool. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's great. Yeah, no, it went great. Next up was AZ Factory. After the founder, Albert Albaz, passed away, the brand became a kind of designer think tank where they have designers in residence creating collections using the fantastic AZ Factory resources. This season was Lutz Huel, a Margiela alumni and longtime designer of his own eponymous brand. We made our way to the beautiful Cartier Foundation for our first show there. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Absolutely, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with AZ Factory, how this kind of got started? I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't have any relationship with AZ Factory before. There's, there's people who are close to, to the universe that AZ is creating. You know, the idea of the idea that Albert Elbaz wanted it was always about several designers just working on, on, on different projects. Um, not necessarily with the same style, but with the same values. They must have felt that I fitted in there somehow. But there were these, these dresses with the ruffles here, and these dresses were basically swimsuits. Like the idea of a swimsuit, the most, the most casual, easy thing. Um, why, don't you, why not just put a ruffle at the bottom, really low in the back, and it's just beautiful. I mean, swimsuits are beautiful, right? Because they're so simple. And then, and then the, um, the florals, where I thought, okay, I'm going to do florals, but because it's kind of mixed be between masculine and feminine. So what we did in the end was we did um, um, camouflage. 
I mean, it's, it's this floor. It's probably based on camouflage, so they really look. It like was when, camouflage. Yes. I didn't even know, like. I, I, there was something that seemed unusual about it, but yes. yeah, it's a floral yes. camouflage. Yes, yes, it's floral camouflage. Like you have the men's shirts with the huge volume in the back. That you, um, they're the parachute shirts, so they really float in the back. For me, that was really nice. That you see just a simple men's shirt, and then when she walks past you, you have this amazing volume in the back, and um, all these really simple ideas. Um, <laughs> That's literally darkness. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's go towards the stairs, everyone. <laughs> Next up was a new designer for me, Alphonse Matrepierre, whose brand is simply called Matrepierre. I was told by no fewer than three people leading up to this event that he's the sweetest person ever, and I was not disappointed. Cool. Is this your first show? No, no, no. Actually, it's my... Uh, Fifth? This yeah. is the fifth one. Okay, yeah, cool. This yeah, is, yeah. It's my first show with you. There was a lot of very surrealistic stuff in this one. Like, I think the first model was carrying... Yeah. <laughs> Were they carrying a dead horse? Yeah, exactly. Because, um, you know, like, the, the whole story is about the tail, Donkey Skin. I don't know if you saw this movie from the 70s. No. Of Jacques Demi, you should. So good. It's one of the first movies with Catherine Deneuve, and she's just, like, exquisite, with big dresses, and, like, she's escape from a castle and so just to hide herself she put donkey skin on her and so it was a bit like there were some references but we of course we tried to like twist it in a more contemporary way and like it's more donkey skin but 3.0 <laughs> It's so risky using florals like for a, a spring collection because it's like cause it's it's scary now, right? <laughs> Tell me about the thought process of that led up to like we're gonna do the florals and it's gonna be the main print. At the beginning, it was supposed to be horses for the print, but very very early on the process, we just like figured out that it was not a good idea. So we just decided to do flowers because on the movie there is a rose with like tell to the characters what to do. So I really love that. You know, for me, like prints, it's really like the red bones, you know, between the whole collection. Just like this rose on the movie. So it was, okay, for the concept, I'm going to do it like that. And just like the collaboration that we did with uh, Desigual, it looks like flowers, but it's mantis. We really try, you know, to have flowers who doesn't look like flowers. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. It was Thank great you. to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Yeah. Botter was up next and just one season after we completed a whole documentary about Rushimi and Lisi's work, I was excited to see how the brand had evolved in just six months. Let's start with a series of outstanding styling details. Frozen bags that were actual, literal frozen water. I saw the pieces backstage in a freezer before the show started and was like, please let this be on the runway. Please let this be on the runway. And, and it was. It was on the runway. We had climbing rope that was tied around models' waists as a base layer or some kind of waist trainer. We see similar mega shoes to last season that are now enshrined in this clear casing that makes them appear to be in still water, even when they're in motion, when the, the model is walking. We also see rubber gloves with a webbing detail that are often used among hardcore gardeners and power swimmers, two activities that gel perfectly with the Botter ethos. The thing to always watch with Botter is the tailoring, and they're now introducing a kind of two-tone, color-blocked paneling to complicate the final appearance of their suits. They continued their deconstructive narrative in suiting with a paneled piece that looks like a wetsuit being peeled off, and this other one that I loved that seemed to be a tucked-in blazer whose lapels lay over a top blazer that's more streamlined, like no lapels and stuff. There were also these interesting tube dresses that were composed entirely of a kelp material. You did hear that correctly. We also had more subtle details like denim that appears to have been treated to resemble the way that light gets unevenly distributed in ocean waves. Most of these details were a bid to bring the runway and water closer together, most notably in the water-filled condoms that went over models' hands to create a kind of mini ecosystem on the runway. Botter's entire brand is built around humans' often misused relationship with the ocean, and that vision is becoming clearer and clearer each season. We traveled across town to the fantastical 3537 building for Vaquera, a New York brand that now shows in Paris with the backing of Dover Street Market. 
This may be the only show where I wish I could play you the soundtrack with the footage. It was all thrash metal and harder Aphex Twin stuff like Come to Daddy. It was it was it was very intense. It was so good. Bliss, how's it going? Good to meet you. Hey, yeah, friend. this was this was nuts. Uh, <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Yeah, this was. Um, I seemed furiously angry. Am I on to anything with that? Or I don't know about anger, but definitely intensity and like you know, look at me. You know, it's yeah. about like drawing people's attention and demanding that they see what's going on. Usually, when I'm watching shows, I try as hard as I can to kind of keep tabs on like what references and sort of what themes I'm seeing, and I lost track around look six. Um, and I know that like kind of the people of New York is sort of what you tend to draw inspiration from. Was that where this one was at this season, or did we shift? I mean, I think it was all kinds of Americans. I think this was loosely based on Americana, so I think we're not drawing so much from New York as all of America. And Patrick's from Alabama, I'm from Indiana, so we are very, like, I'm a Midwestern kid, and you're, like, <laughs> Southern. So I think we're always influenced by American tropes in general. Okay. And I think the char a character based collection is something we're excited to do, because um, it's something that we've, like, moved away from in the past couple of seasons, and it felt good to return to. So our jumping off point for that was um, a group of people leaving Burning Man um, and breaking down in the desert and hanging out in a bar with the locals and sort of like what do those characters look like what does that clash of like references look like if there's like a sailor and a jilted bride and a lady who just stole 50 American flags and she's wearing them you know like how do they interact this is always like my big question because I don't do any form of design is that when you have a collection that's really really maximalist what's supposed to be the next step from there does that make you nervous at all like what can we do after this or is it like no like the ideas will never run out let's just keep running an interesting question. I mean, I feel like we'll probably do a really minimal collection one day. I think for now we're happy with where we're at, but like we're always into doing something new and unexpected. But I think, yeah, we have a lot of ideas. If anything, we have too many, and it's more about editing down that is important. This is wonderful. Next, we had to travel a few blocks away and fight through massive crowds to arrive in time for Koche. Christelle Kocher created a collection inspired by the technology that's quickly becoming a larger and larger part of our lives. The collection was done in collaboration with Google's ATAP department, which stands for Advanced Technology and Projects. It's a, a team at Google that creates products that are meant to change the way that people relate to technology. Among the product for this collection that they did in that collaboration was a hoodie with a little LCD screen and a skirt that reacts to heat and light by glowing a bright pink color. The name of the collection was Do Hoodies Dream of Beautiful Sunrises, which is a play on the title of the seminal science fiction novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. It's a book in which a man's relationship with technology teaches him more about what it means to be human. Y'all already know that we're not in chronological order here, so it's now night, and we are making our way to a showroom party with Meryl Rogue. Meryl Rogue. I was honored to be Meryl's first video interview ever, and I've had the privilege of closely watching her work develop over the last um, year. You are now officially, now that we've started speaking, you are officially my most interviewed designer of all time. Oh, wow. Three. <laughs> you have, an honor. You have three, Actually, yeah. Actually, it's funny because, um, you know, when I, I didn't know who was coming tonight, mm -hmm. and then I wondered, I wonder if Bliss is coming. Is Always. he snobbing me? Always. <laughs> so this is kind of a weird collection for you, in a good way. You, you designed this during a pretty hectic part of your life. And then, because yeah. your, your child was just born three months old. Yes, almost. Yes. Almost three yes. months old. And then this is also a collaborative collection, which I don't think you've done before. I have not done it before. Uh, and it's also a kind of a nostalgic collection uh, for me because in March, after the previous Fashion Week, we, like a week later, we went to LA and uh, it was amazing. Mm. <laughs> I loved it. And so it was really inspiring, really. And that was like the beginning point of the collection. I'm sorry. We have you're a selfie fine. No, you're good. A selfie moment. Yeah, She's so popular. This is my favorite. <laughs> I think you have to get that. <laughs> Anyways, so we started to do research and came across the work of Benny Bischoff, which is an artist from Switzerland. And we really <laughs> loved what he was doing. There's a, a kind of sarcasm and irony in, in his work. And then at one point, we're like, why don't we just contact him and just see if he wants in. to do it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we created this whole collection kind of together wonderful yeah, yeah. Um, and look at Anna in our full gown look she was helping us earlier she was she was pulling stuff off the rack in such an elegant way it was like we'll just keep filming it this is fine I love your coat that's so cool who makes it oh awesome wow that's cool is it a men's one 
Very cool. So, because you know, sometimes like the women's stuff, it, yeah. they'll make it big enough yeah. that yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, you yeah. can just grab that. No, What's it made of? Cashmere. I've had it more than ten years. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that's really like a pass it to the kids kind yeah. of thing. Sorry. No, not at all. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm gonna let you get back to the party. Okay, thank you. Cool. Can we can we get a selfie? Yeah, of course. We've like literally never taken one before. Ah. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Blake. Please tell me your name. Ray Jo. The brand pronounced like R A Y, so it's Ray. Can you tell me a little bit about the collection, just in general, for this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the collection is was inspired by lockdown in Shanghai for two months so it's more about like some stressful feeling and tension and everything so I made a lot of like sharp items and uh, some broken mirrors and a very uh, sharp sound like this I mix all of this together and to express this feeling and some bloody red color and uh, that Very good. Ooh. and then there's a, a really fascinating part of the presentation this time with the the artists can you tell us a little bit about that yeah the friends uh, the art the shibari artist is my friend human you want to come my name is human Cho I'm a shibari artist for every, anyone who doesn't know a little bit about what shibari is uh, actually it's uh, the bondage but the Japanese way so we use a uh, jit rope to tie up the model, let them be immobile. In Japan, the shibari was used to tie the prisoner. Nowadays, we are more utilized uh, in different ways, maybe uh, performance, maybe installation, or for fashion. Um, I love her collection so much. <laughs> and like, make me remind me the shibari is like uh, something very fluid. Thank you so much, both of you. This is beautiful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Back in a car and heading across the city to another show. I'm still trying to figure out how other fashion editors dependably do this for four straight weeks of shows. You would have to basically take a helicopter and get airdropped to see everything all week without being late. Next up, we had Christian Wainants, a Belgian designer who started his career by winning the Woolmark Prize. Christian has been showing since 2013. Hi. hi, hi, hello, nice hi, to meet you. you. Okay. Absolutely, congratulations. Thank you very much, thank yeah. you. Can you tell me a little bit about the core concepts in the collection? Yeah, sure. So um, it's my favorite season, summer, uh, especially the end of the summer when you go to the beach, you still have some sand over uh, after, after laying all day um, doing basically nothing. <laughs> Uh, it's also something, uh, a moment of your life where you have a, a really serene uh, uh, peace of mind and, uh, um, and also the idea of traveling and uh, uh, the idea of positivity and you, you feel really uh, um, in, a, in, a, in a good mood. So uh, I, I try to translate that uh, through the, the colors of the collection and also the, the general mood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was almost one that was kind of like a Hawaiian print, but it was, there was a little bit of variation like with these. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about what you brought into that variation? Basically, I didn't want to really have a one specific uh, story about the print, so I, I like the idea that you don't really know where it's from, you don't know if it's uh, I don't know, Japanese, Hawaiian, or uh, maybe Indian, so uh, uh, there, were, there were a lot of inspirations on my mood board, and I, for me it's more the idea of traveling in general, uh, rather than only one specific uh, place. The portrait was especially beautiful, this one here, who, who's the portrait artist? Uh, it's Marion Manuel, she's a, she's a Swiss... Uh, uh, artist and uh, and I loved uh, her portraits because uh, they're very subtle and very poetic. Uh, they are portraits of uh, Indian uh, teenagers, um, and they were very inspirational for this season. This was so beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Have a good one. Next up was GMBH, a brand that I've loosely followed for about two years, but never officially attended a show for. Benjamin Hughesby and Serha Isik are going through a very hectic time in their careers right now. Just this year, they were brought on as creative directors to help juice up the Italian luxury brand Trissardi. Additionally, this is their first time showing on the women's calendar with the GmbH brand, and they fittingly chose to show a unisex collection. There were a few pieces that contained a beautiful script written in Arabic, which loosely translates to godly wisdom, peaceful power, vision, and muse. With designers from Berlin, I always look for how they're using the color black, which seems to have become the official uniform for that city. We saw a lot of different uses of black, but we also saw some surprises with a number of intricate florals and a good deal of lightly colored organic denim. There is so much community around the GmbH brand. When the designers came out at the end, you could tell that the front row was full of friends and family. So we're walking up to Benjamin Ben Moyal, and I almost tripped. 
Uh, this is a fairly new designer. I'm not super familiar with his work. This is definitely the first presentation that I have gone to. I'm really excited because from the little bit that I have seen, he does really excellent work. A lot of focus on textiles, which will be really cool. There's apparently this whole thing with him making textiles from cassette tapes, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to ask him about that. I'm not really sure how that would even work but uh, we're gonna find out. This is day one. On the, the first day of Paris Fashion Week, there's usually kind of a warm-up day where things start much later in the day. And so here it is now uh, 5.30 almost, and uh, we're just now getting started. So there's just a few shows today, and then parties start, of course, and uh, then the, the really hectic part of the week begins. I'm excited. So you are really fixated on textiles, yeah. which I love. Can you tell me a little bit about, for just people who aren't familiar with your work, the cassette tape textile technique you do? It was mainly like getting uh, cassette tapes from uh, all around the world and weaving them, like weaving the tape, like it was a yarn. So we created this fabric and we industrialized this fabric actually. And now we can like weave thousands of meters out of uh, these cassette tapes. We developed now a jacquard, uh, which is like inspired by the Monet paintings. Uh, I noticed that that's the floral one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one is beautiful. Thank it, you. it looks so complex because of the way the flowers have to be depicted. Yeah. Is there, I mean, is there anything to the technique side of that or is it just... The technique is crazy. Well, that's jacquard. So jacquard is quite an amazing technique. And basically we wanted to uh, make the textile looking like it was a painting. Um, so every kind of flower and every kind of colors has a different weaving technique. There is something like 15 different weaving techniques into this fabric. So it's a couple of months of uh, development uh, to create, uh, again, the armure in French. Uh, and yeah, and we get this amazing textile, which is also, again, completely woven out of upcycled yarns. Um, it's not just to be completely upcycled, it's just my way of creating things. I need to be limited to create uh, stuff. This, this was great. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. Yeah, Thanks absolutely, you. yeah. Thank you, so I'm gonna do absolutely. snaps, I guess, at first. You ready? Yeah. Hi, I'm Florentina Leitner, and I'm from Austria, but based in Antwerp. This is my first season in Paris. I showed digital last season in uh, London. The collection, it always starts with like different things I'm getting inspired by. And uh, one of the things was when I was in summer in Austria at this lake apartment with my mom, there were this amazing TP kind of tents, and I knew them already from when I was a child. And I really thought, oh my God, this is so cool. I would love to bring this to Paris. And we, when you saw it downstairs, they were like built in there. And it was just like the summer feeling for me because I was always there with my parents and we had some picnics there and we saw some deers because there's a lot of wildlife in this area. And that's why I made also some deer prints. Like this baby doll dress has like the deers and we have it also in pink. Oh, prints, prints of literal deer. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought you meant like, like deer fur, but it's literally no, just no, no, no. like photos of deer, it's illustrations. It's an illustration. It's by an artist called Rob van Mielo. And he makes really blue, beautiful like watercolor paintings. He also did some stuff for Marnie and for MS already. So I was like always following his work. And I was like, oh, I would love to once do something with him. And now I got him to, to give us this deer, which is like really cute. And I think the collection always is very girly. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, enjoy again the presentation. Of and course. I, yeah. like. I would like to formally give a massive thanks to everyone who supports this channel on Patreon. YouTube does not pay nearly enough to make videos like this happen, so I depend on you all for the budget to pursue coverage like this. Truly, I mean, really, from the bottom of my heart, this means the world to me. Thank you. If you want to be part of the journey of making the best fashion criticism on earth possible, go join the Patreon through the link in the description for this video. You're all the best. I'll see you next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time.